My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people want to make friends? Just trying to make you some money. My job, not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach. So call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. On a simply fabulous day, Nadal roared 561 points, that's to be jumped 1.78%, and the NASDAQ surged 2.40%. We got a nice reminder that good things can still happen. Good things like the president saying you might get a similar stimulus deal with a Joe Manchin, a master of the Senate, or, or it'll be more flexible in the travel ban, both of which sent up the travel stocks and pushed down bond prices, and that helped the banks. We spend so much time talking about the Fed, though, and the president's proposals and Washington's machinations that occasionally we forget the simple truth that stocks tend to trade on their own future prospects, not just the direction of interest rates or the passage of federal stimulus or even a pandemic. Sure, we have a situation where Omicron can cause a lot of havoc. But now that there's a belief that the super infectious new strain could eventually burn itself out, well, that's positive. More importantly, if we know corporate earnings will be okay during the Omicron havoc, then we've got a decent shot at making some real money here. Even if the averages don't stay as strong as they were today. And remember, we don't think they can. Now, speaking of this session, coming into today, most people would have presumed that we'd be down again after yesterday's carnage. Why not? I mean, we've learned that Omicron has already become the overwhelmingly dominant strain in this country. We didn't even know it existed until the day before Thanksgiving. It was 3% of the country last week. It's 73% now. That's terrifying. Of course, we got the usual national split. Lots of people simply don't care, refuse to get vaccinated, even as this new strain is 70 times more contagious than the Delta variant and can deliver a punch of its own, just asked my wife. But the fact that you can catch COVID even with a triple vaccination, as I and many of my friends and family have in the last week, is pretty unnerving, even if it is a more mild form. So things were looking ugly yesterday. Then along comes Micron, no, uh, not Omicron, the variant, but Micron, the company. Now, if you don't know Micron, it's a semiconductor manufacturer of DRAMs and flash chips. Those are the most basic building blocks for anything digital. Last night, these guys, whom you know I like very much, reported. And when I read the conference called Transcript, I was agape. Their business was fabulous. Fabulous on almost every line. Now, this was not supposed to be the case. In fact, a lot of investors were terrified of a downside surprise because Micron has these huge up and down cycles. It's an incredibly boom and bust business. Wall Street thought we were in on a bust phase. And maybe that bust phase would last a year, maybe two years. Not unusual. What we heard from Micron was the exact opposite, which is why I was up so much today. There was no down cycle this time. There might have been a pause, which there was too much supply, okay? But that pause didn't even last for six months. It was astounding. So what changed? The end markets that Micron plays in. This company used to be hostage to the personal computer. Basic chips, you know. Now they got their mitts in pretty much anything digital. And a lot of the, this stuff is higher performance than we're used to from Micron. Sanjay Marotra, the straight shooting CEO, told an incredibly important business story on last night's call. Uh, it, that call was faster than a speeding Fed chair, more powerful than Joe Manchin, and able to leap the White House in a single bound. And because Micron's in everything, the positive pin action lifted a ton of stocks. First, Sanjay told us that the data center market was incredibly strong, making it hard for them to meet demand. Well, that's fantastic news for Amazon Web Services, for Microsoft Azure, for Google Cloud, and even IBM. Speaking of Amazon, you know, I think Prime is crushing here thanks to Omicron, which gives you a solid reason to stay home and order things over the Internet for Christmas. As someone who's quarantined and can't leave the house, I can barely believe how much stuff I find myself ordering. I, I almost want to attend an Amazon uh, anonymous meeting. Is there one nearby? I mean, holy cow. I bought something during this show. Anything that's good news for Microsoft's Azure only augments an already strong business that has the power to push through price increases. What are you going to do? Stop using Windows? I dare you. Google can be both data center and data hog. I always want to know what they're doing. Finally, IBM does matter. And while I'm concerned that this could be a convoluted quarter for them, the strength of Micron makes me want to pull the trigger after they report. 
Of course, Meta Platforms, the artist formerly known as Facebook, is also a data hog. So you could argue they must be doing well, too. And when data centers are booming, then you know what that means. It's time to buy AMD, NVIDIA, and Marvell Tech, the latter of which just reported a big number and is way down from its highs. I think these three companies have a lot going for them away from data centers, too, especially AMD and NVIDIA, which dominate their end markets with their high-performance chips. Marvell's got some really good 5G, too. Now, these stocks have been quite weak of late, so you're being given a chance to buy them at a Fed and Omicron-induced discount, something I have been telling members of the CNBC Investing Club to do. Uh, you should have joined by now. Uh, what's the point of not? Micron also said cell phones were strong. Well, that means Apple, which means Skyworks Solutions, which means Corvo, which means Broadcom, which oddly lagged the group today, even as it's been strong. And it also means Xilinx, which is close to being acquired by AMD. Of course, most investors just care about Apple. Who can blame them? Not its suppliers. And you know what? I, I am making an assumption from what I heard last night that business is even stronger than I thought at Apple. My goal, though, is to show you how far-reaching Micron is that can practically carry the whole market on its back, particularly the mega techers. Oh, and Apple, I have a new theory. Own it, don't trade it. <laughs> All right. But let's save the best for last. Automobiles. Micron's made tremendous inroads in the auto industry, particularly electric vehicle batteries, but also the autonomous driving features that need lots of semiconductor content. Well, Sanjay blew everyone's socks off when he predicted that there would be an end to most auto-related semiconductor shortages as early as the middle of the year. Most, most shortages altogether. But listen to this. This is gigantic. You gotta, you gotta understand. This is just gigantic. Until this conference call, anyone who suggested that the shortages might be over soon would have been dismissed as a total wishful thinker out of touch with reality. But nobody has a better read on this industry than Micron because it straddles Every Internet of Things fence. Now, if we can really solve the semiconductor shortage next year, I, mean, I, got, I got news for you. That's got major implications for a ton of industries. Just like uh, just going by what we like for the charitable trust, CMC Investment Club members know that we think, and especially if you're at our last club meeting, Ford is a terrific company. By the way, we also own Cisco, which is doing well in software. But we were worried about supply chain problems. We had to shit so little. Oh, I wish we had now. I mean, the Micron call alleviated a lot of the fear there. If the automakers can get chips, they can get the chips they need. They can boost production, setting off a chain reaction that will push down the price of used cars, which is the principal cause of inflation that Fed chair is so worried about. We know that chips are the gating factor for not just Ford, but also GM. Can you imagine if they can meet 2023 demand, how huge that would be? I like Ford the most. Buy Ford. When things are tight in the chip industry, you can also buy the semiconductor capital equipment stocks, including applied materials, KLA, and LAM Research, L LCR, L LRCX is our favorite of those. Now we got some other bullish reports that look good pin action last night, too. Nike told us that the retail consumers are alive and well, which ignited that whole group. We've been worried about them. Desperately needed to get, give them the recent Omicron sell-off. Then Biden, thank heavens, took the possibility of another lockdown off the table, which put a bid in the, uh, a bunch of travel stocks. He also sounded confident about passing a scaled-back version of the Build Back Better bill. But in the end, it was the news from Micron that had the biggest impact. The bottom line, I know this is a, a lot to come to terms with, especially with the Santa Claus rally in town. Most of the big name experts wouldn't deign to read about a single quarter from a single company though. But that's their mistake and we don't make it here. In this business, you need truth telling tentacles and Micron is the one that has almost all of them. I wanna take calls and I wanna start by talking to Kyle in Delaware, Kyle. Holly jolly booyah to you, Mr. Kramer. Hey, good luck to the Eagles as they well, take on the Washington ooh, football like team that. tonight. As a Cowboys yeah, fan, man, I, I got to tell you that, that. Well, I got to get after the show. I got to get down there. That I'm quarterback in the Washington football team. They had to get somebody. All right, what's going on? I'm calling about Corsair Gaming. They. Looked very promising several months ago, but the supply chain issues have been affecting them pretty strongly. Do you still believe in their long term demand? And do you think well, if so, the problem that this is look at Logitech. Optimal... Look at Lo Logitech's, a, uh, Logitech's a better company, and that can't hold up either. I mean, these are companies that are at the mercy of, uh, of supply chain problems, and, and it's just really hard to solve them. They get solved last. Let's go to Angelo in New York. Angelo. Hi, Jim. 
Uh, my question is about uh, Dicks. I, hi. I bought uh, Dicks at 120 hi. Now it's down here. You think I should buy some more, or should I hope it goes up before my wife finds out and kills me? Wow. I, geez, that's... I'd like to avoid that particular homicide. Most homicides are from home. Uh, but here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you good news. Dicks should be bought right here, right now. I'm not kidding. I think Dicks is just ridiculously, ridiculously low, and I like it. That was a dynamite quarter. I think your marriage is safe. I think your life is safe. Well, at least for you. I mean, a base with Dicks. Now, some stock... Some stocks illustrate the big picture for us. Micron is one of those. And boy, did we see that kind of pin action today, and it caused the market to roar. Oh, man, tonight, President Biden is ready to spend some real money on COVID testing. So I'm giving the floor to one of the best health experts on the matter, Dr. Michael Mina, acknowledged to be the man on this issue. Then could the market have some more upside thanks to the Santa Claus rally? I'm going off the charts to find out how long this strain could last. And a company that has seen pre-COVID levels in some of its business. I'm cutting into Blade Air Mobility. So stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.